Where do you want to kick us off tonight? Yeah, I want to talk about, and I want to start with the one that I think is the most interesting to me, and that's Dave Aranda at Baylor, because the way that Dave Aranda has gotten himself to the hot seat, in my opinion, is just a bizarre path, right? If you look at what Baylor's done last several years, they've been pretty abysmal, and not a lot's gone right, except they did win a Sugar Bowl. Like, they, he won a Sugar Bowl with the Baylor Bears, and he did it with 40 yards passing, from Bahannon. So like, you know, we're talking about, you know, players who, you know, they, they flamed out, maybe not as good as they were, or, you know, maybe a miss, you know, cause he ended up going to shaping or whatever else. But I mean, guys, like this is, this is not a wonderful, you know, Baylor team right now, but they still kind of found their way over the hump with some good defense, you know, back when they were playing in the 2021 season, I know the sugar bowls played the next year, but the 2021 season, it's been a couple of really bad seasons since then, though, for Baylor. And that's why Dave Aranda finds himself on the hot seat after being one of the most sought after coordinators for, gosh, what seems like 10 years. It seemed like he was out there, you know, for a whole decade, like, oh man, whenever Aranda decides to jump, that program's immediate contender. And it looked like it was heading that way, you know, COVID season was standing. And then it just kind of fell apart. And I'm kind of curious what you think is the reason and kind of why you think it's gone off the rails for Dave Aranda and what he might have to do to save his job. Well, you're absolutely right that he was the hotness when he was hired uh, after the 2019 season. And, you know, obviously COVID was an issue his first season. That was an issue for everybody, but there were flashes. They really broke through in 2021. Like you mentioned, they won the big 12 beating Oklahoma state on that epic final play. If you remember that championship game to get to the sugar bowl, I think they beat, uh, they, they made it to, a couple of sugar bowls recently just one under Dave Aranda, but this right. one was, uh, I can't remember who they beat in that sugar bowl, but it might've been it was uh, Ole, Miss. It was Ole Miss. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, Ole Miss, you beat Ole Miss in the sugar bowl. But to me, this comes down to one major decision for Dave Aranda. And that's choosing Blake Shapin over Gary Bohannon, a guy that led you to a championship. And you mentioned Gary Bohannon, not wowing you with the statistics. You mentioned he only put up 40 yards in that Sugar Bowl win over Ole Miss, but he was a winning quarterback, and that is not something you can just take for granted when you're looking at passing him by for the next new hotness recruit. Blake Shapin might have entered the transfer portal if he didn't get the starting job after that 2021 season. Hey, Garrett, do you know what Gary Bohannon did? or uh, Do you know what Blake Shapin did very recently after this last season? Uh, what did he do? He entered the transfer portal yeah, and he didn't yeah. win anything of consequence with him at the helm. Well, and so listen, was Gary Bohannon going to lead Baylor to a dynasty in the Big 12? And would they have supplanted Texas as the champions of the Big 12 last year and gone to the playoff? Probably not. Would they have beat TCU and gone to the playoff with him at the helm in 2022? Probably not. But would Dave Aranda be on the hot seat if he would have committed him as a quarterback and built around him in a defense and tried to develop weapons either through the portal or high school recruiting? I don't think he'd be on the hot seat. And that's what I'm worried about a little bit to distract a little bit from this topic. Kansas State worries me a little bit about this. As they, I know it's a completely different situation um, as they get in with Avery Johnson this year, but they're kind of pulling a Dave Aranda and giving up on – a experienced championship winning quarterback for the young new hotness. I think it'll work out better for Kansas state, but that's the decision that just spiraled a bunch of yep. negativity for Baylor under Dave Aranda for my money. Well, and the other note on the sort of quarterback personnel was Kyron drones was signed at Baylor. You had him on campus. He looked pretty dang good for Virginia tech last year. Obviously like there's room for development, room for improvement, but that's going to be any quarterback. You're telling me if you're Baylor, you wouldn't have rather had Kyron Drones on campus last year as an option, maybe prevent you from what was it, three and nine or whatever they went last year. Like, I'm sure you would have rather had Kyron Drones there. Now, one thing that I think is going to help Baylor, and this is why for me right now, I think Dave Aranda is at that Buffalo hot. That's our four out of five right now. It's hot, but I think there's a way to save your job outside of just some kind of miracle season. Like, I don't think they have to be amazing this year. But I think if they take a step in the right direction, specifically with the quarterback play, it will result in a season where he gets more time. Uh, if you look at what they brought in, they brought in Daquan Finn. 
Daquan Finn is an absolute baller. He's going to be really, really good for Baylor. Um, now, how much help does he get? What's the personnel look like? We'll kind of wait and see in terms of who's going to step up and be his big playmakers and help him make a difference. Also got to you know ask a couple questions about the offensive line. But, you know, looking at what Daquan Finn brings, he brings playmaking ability to Baylor. And the other thing that I think really helps is that Baylor's in a very different position right now than some of the other coaches on this list where they're in the Big 12, where, you know, you just got your, you know, big time legacy programs, Texas and Oklahoma out the door. You're bringing in a bunch of fresh blood. There's going to be a lot of turnover. There's a power vacuum. And if Baylor can just kind of compete and look okay in year one, I think that's enough to save Dave Aranda's job. You know, maybe go six and six, make a bowl game. I think that's, you know, saving his job. I don't think that's anything Baylor fans will be happy about necessarily, but six and six, better quarterback play, you know, kind of keep things going in the transfer portal, you know, maybe go get you another quarterback next cycle through the transfer portal. I think that will go a long way in sort of the personnel and decision-making for Dave Aranda and proving he needs to keep his job. It's a tough schedule. I, I think I do think he has to make a bowl game. I'm going to go four out of five as well. Four flame emojis, Buffalo hot. It's a tough schedule. I think he has to at least make a bowl game. I think he probably has to win seven games for Baylor to feel really confident about keeping him for 2025. And it's a tough schedule to do that. They've got Tarleton State should be a win. they got a couple of tough non-conference games. They're at Utah in a non-conference game early in the year. They've got Air Force. Is that non-conference technically? That Utah game is a non-conference game. Oh, wow. That's scheduled weird. before. Yeah, so absolutely brutal draw that's for bizarre. Baylor to get the best team in their conference, arguably. <laughs> conference as a non-conference. As a non-conference game. So even if you win, <laughs> it doesn't help your conference standings. And it's on the road. Oh, man. And they come back home and have Air Force. As a as a non-conference game, that's a difficult game to prepare for a week after you go to altitude and get beat up by Utah. So it's a tough road, but I think seven wins is what he needs this year or Baylor's going to be looking for a new coach. You're absolutely right, though. Daquan Finn will be the best quarterback I think he's had at Baylor. But oh, yeah. the question about the Bears has always been, since he's arrived, who's he throwing the ball to? And even the yeah. four-star guys that they brought in at that receiver position are in the transfer portal or, you know, buried on the depth chart. So development right. is a question there as well. Yeah. A lot of unproven there at Baylor, obviously. I do think that the schedule is a little manageable. I'll give them a little bit of help. Colorado, BYU, Iowa state kind of in the middle there could be an opportunity to build some Colorado momentum. Colorado state on the road though. Like. I, I do know <laughs> it's on the road. Maybe it's a little bit early. Yeah, I don't know. Texas tech could be a little easy after a bye week I don't know where I'm not trying to, you know, speculate too wildly here there's not going to be loads of auto wins on this schedule because i think the big 12 is really balanced uh but fortunately you know for baylor at least this is you know i think i think they're going to be in a better position and i think when you have a quarterback like daquan finn you're going to be in a spot where you can you know get yourself into a game that maybe you don't necessarily deserve to be in right he's a guy like that can at, steal a game or two absolutely oh yeah at texas tech texas tech's better than you but with Daquan Finn, you know, he comes out, scores a couple points real quick, maybe put up a good defensive effort in that one. You could steal that one. And, and I do think that, you know, end of the season, you know, you might have some opportunities as well. TCU could be a win down the stretch. Uh, you know, you got Houston, maybe Kansas at home. I don't know. We'll have to kind of see what they can do. Gracious, yeah. how about that?